Unlike food inflation which has been high and volatile between 10 and 14 percent, core inflation has been sticky between 7.5 and 8 percent. Indeed, if you look at the monthly changes on core inflation, they are highly correlated with the movements in the currency. For example, last year between July and September, we saw a substantial depreciation of the currency followed by a strengthening of the currency. The rupee went from a level of about 55 to the dollar to a peak of 68 to the dollar and has subsequently come off to a level of 60 to the dollar. If you see the movement in, the, in core inflation on a month-on-month -month basis, the weak currency periods are associated with rising core inflation. Conversely, strength of the rupee is associated with falling core inflation. The recent past has seen strength in the rupee and we expect that therefore the near future also will see some moderation in core inflation. This of course applies to the traded goods in the economy, that which is affected by the currency. A large part of core inflation, accounting for 10% of the total CPI basket and a quarter of core inflation, is housing. Housing in the CPI is measured using house rents rather than house prices themselves. And in turn, the house rents are measured using HRA or house rent allowance. That is to say that if your HRA allowance increases year on year, it is estimated that housing inflation also went up by a like amount. Now, typically for many large companies, including the public sector, allowances are linked to previous year's inflation. That is to say, if, in, if it is high inflation year in this year, the next year HRA goes up and consequently the estimates for next year's housing inflation go up. To bring the CPI inflation down, therefore, we need at least one year in which the inflation by the headline itself comes down so that the next year's HRA comes down and the next year's core inflation comes down. Core inflation thus is dependent on these two factors, currency and a fall in the headline, both of which appear at this point of time to be quite supportive. So let's quickly summarize core inflation and food inflation. Food inflation has been high and volatile thanks to the high increases in minimum support prices. The much lower increase in MSPs should mean that food inflation remains contained in the near term, while we will watch the impact of the monsoon this year. When it comes to core inflation, it has been sticky and has been driven by housing and the currency. Both factors should not lead to higher inflation this year. Indeed, there are signs that inflation could head lower. With food inflation and core inflation expected to head lower in the near term, we do expect the Reserve Bank to increasingly be more accommodative in monetary policy. That is to say, over the next year or two, we should expect the RBI to start reducing interest rates. The RBI has set itself a target to bring CPI inflation down to 8% by January 2015 and to 6% by January 2016. And they've made a good start because as of February this year, CPI inflation is already down to 8%. As you go later on to this year, with CPI inflation on a falling trajectory and headed lower, therefore, we do expect the RBI to turn more accommodative. And it is possible, and we expect the RBI to start reducing interest rates over the next two years. This board presents opportunities for investors in bond funds and in the bond markets. As RBI delivers lower interest rates, bond prices are likely to rise, leading to gains for bond investors. In the very near term, of course, we do see the risks. There's an election, the budget, and the upcoming monsoon. For investors with a holding period of three to six months, therefore, or shorter, we recommend that investors stay in short-term and ultra-short-term funds, while investors with a 12 to 18 months or longer holding period should look at longer duration bond funds, such as income funds and dynamic bond funds. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.